presenter today is Mark Abshire. He works out of our St. Louis facility, but he's just a little bit of everywhere. He just hops in that pickup truck and he goes just about anywhere we need him to. A little interesting thing, Mark helped start the rapid prototyping group at Texas Instruments. So he's got a lot of knowledge when it comes to rapid prototyping and additive and subtractive manufacturing. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Mark. Mark, thank you and take it away, sir. Thank you, Bob, for the introduction. Today we're going to look at some parameters in uh, FDM to improve our density and actually hold a vacuum pressure. So here's some of the parameters and things I've been working with we're going to be discussing. So if you look at 3D printing for FDM process, it really is a porous process. And the porosity is kind of a good thing for some applications. Uh, such as thermal forming. If you need a tool that you're going to suck air through, then the porosity is great. But what if you had a part you really want to hold a vacuum in it, uh, or a fluid study, something like that? To hold a vacuum, your FDM part needs to be a non-porous or as fully dense as possible. Now, there's all kinds of documentation out there for sealing uh, porous printed parts. There's lots of reasons for sealing them. Uh, fluid analysis, airflow studies are great. Some people just for aesthetics. But there's several methods out there, and these are already documented, so I'm not, I won't go over all of them. But the vapor smoothing, the epoxy coating, epoxy infiltration, the real purpose of this presentation is to start with a part as dense as possible so that if you use any sealing methods, then you'll have a better chance at getting it sealed. When you look at uh, FDM as it produces our slots, layers of our CAD, you'll see, and here's the red on this uh, image, this red shows just a slice of a, of a CAD drawing. But they all have one thing in common for FDM. They all have contours on them. The contour is really that perimeter that just gets a draw around the outside edge. And they all have rasters. That raster is a serpentine tool path inside that actually fills in between the contours there. So that's what makes your solid body. Now that raster can be as sparse as you want to be separated or close together uh, as zero. So that when you actually look at the tool path, here it is shaded in, you'll see it draws the border, it draws the raster file, but you'll also notice on here uh, that there is some porosity here. So when you look at the porosity, it's actually the it's actually where the uh, raster and the border or the uh, contour meets. You can see those voids in there, um, and those stacked up and accumulated is what creates the porosity in FDM parts. So if you were to look at your extruded path on your FDM, it would actually, it wouldn't look like a, a, a cylinder that you would think coming out of the uh, extruded orifice of the tip. It actually is a flattened out bar. It's going to have a radius on each side, but it's a flattened out bar. And the layer thickness in there is what you set for your layer height. That's what makes you flat. But your contour width is typically two times whatever your layer thickness is. So if you're drawing at 10 thousandths layers, your width of your toolpath or your contour width will be two times or 20 thousandths for a 10 thousandths layer. Now your raster width, you can control it also. It's typically two times, a little less sometimes. The air gap is the space between your uh, extruded path. That space between is often for a solid part would be set to zero. So if you were to draw a solid part here, it would actually draw it set to uh, uh, with these contour going one way and the rasters going a different direction. And as you build layers up here, it would actually leave air pockets. You can see them in here, it's some air pockets through here. This is what causes your porosity in here is these air pockets. So the question is, how do we get rid of those? One thing to be note is that all FDM machines, these are all the machines by Stratasys, 
have one thing in common. They're all going to draw contours and they're all going to draw rasters to make that slice layer. However, from the F370 up to the Fortress machines, you have an advanced software there called Insight. And the Insight will let you modify the layer thickness, contour width, multiple contours, link contours, and a lot more that we're going to go over today. So Insight and up has the, uh, I'm sorry, Insight is only available for the 370 and up toward the production uh, machines. So for my test, I designed a simple bottle and a tube on top that I could draw a vacuum from, and that way I can know that I'm actually uh, making a sealed part. I made five parts. I call them A through E, and they were built on an F370 using different parameters for, uh, with the Insight software. Part A was built with a green flag. That green flag and inside is what we use when we just need a, something simple and quick. It just does it all for us. And then as we started moving to part B, C, D, I added more parameters, and I'll go over those with you. So each part I made changes to until I could get to a part that was dense enough to actually hold a vacuum. This vacuum pump that I use here is just a simple vacuum pump. I actually, this is a pump that I actually use on my um, uh, brake job when I do a brake job on my pickup. So uh, you can uh, use this and get one from any automotive store. So there's a cross section of the bottle. I just wanted to see if I can get enough density to hold air. I know once I hold air, I can hold fluid and everything else. So air was my final test. And I've got a short video here uh, on how to get to your toolpath parameters in Insight. And in this short video, I'm going to show you how to get some of the advanced parameters. Uh, you can uh, have Insight installed on your computer as a standalone, or you can launch Insight, just as we do in this video, from GrabCAD Print. Okay, we'll go up to the uh, Apps tab, Launch Insight. It's always going to load the latest version of Insight when you come from GrabCAD. With Insight loaded in the Operations window on the right-hand side, you can choose the machine icon right down there and select your machine that supports the advanced Insight software. As you can see when I pull down the list, all the Fortis machines plus the F370 machines are available with Insight. Once you select the machine, we can load the uh, STL file in, open, select the part, STL file, it loads in, and then we can slice that CAD file into build layers. And you saw how those build layers look, they'll just be red slices. So now let's take a look at the toolpaths and some of the advanced settings. Again, in the toolbar menu, we would select the Toolpath tab up here at the top. Pull down menu, choose Setup. It's the first one in there. And you'll notice in the Operations window over on the right-hand side, it has changed the display to some Toolpath options. And you can change some of these options right here. You can change such as a solid fill for density. You can also change uh, normal surface style in here. But with the advanced icon down here, you can open a dialog box with even more options. Here you can choose multiple contours. We'll pull that. You can now change your contour width. You can look at the number of contours. There's an air gap in there. And linked contours. And we'll be taking a closer look at length contours and air gap here in just a minute uh, and, and go with those. Also notice that on the raster fill side, we can change the raster width that's drawn internally as well as the air gap where the contour and raster meet. And we can also change the air gap from raster to raster. 
Now, if you want to understand all these parameters, there's a little help icon down here, and you can scroll through uh, the help page, and it will give you a description of each parameter. And here's a little picture coming up of the um, uh, linked contours. And basically, it just helps you avoid start and stop scene uh, on your part so you can have a better sealed part. Uh, Insight has one of the most thorough and easy to understand help documentations that I've ever seen. But we're going to look specifically at some of the contour settings and raster fill settings that will produce uh, reduce your uh, porosity and increase the density of the part. So one thing we want to look at here is multiple contours. Uh, when you select multiple contours, and here's an example, I've taken the contour here and I've said uh, multiple and I said make it three contours. So it's actually going to draw three uh, contours on this. Now if I zoom up, I've also checked the box that says link contours. And if you'll look in here, you can see they're linked here, they're linked here. It's not going to start and stop as it draws the contour, but make one continuous build, three, three paths going around uh, so that it helps seal the edges of this part. So linking your contours and multiple contours will make it more dense. But as you do your fill, you'll notice you still have some porosity in the fill right there uh, from the rasters where it meets. So we want to look at how to change some of that porosity in there. So if you remember, we had a setting here where we could change our uh, air gap settings. Right now you're looking at contour to contour. If we had four contour uh, perimeters drawing around, it would look something like this. And as it builds up, you'll still see those air pockets in there. What we really want to do is we want to close those air pockets up as we draw. These are set to zero. So my, right now, I'm zero setting. I'm edge to edge for my contours. But I'd really like to draw something more like this that fills in all the way to the edge. And we can do that setting by crowding it. And I say crowd it, we will change our air gap instead of being a zero where it's side by side. We'll put a negative two thousandths. Therefore, as that molten material comes out, it's going to ooze around into that pocket and start filling in there. So we can change our contour air gap to minus two. We can change our contour to raster. That Remember, that's where our raster uh, fill is meeting our contour. We can put a negative number there, and I can put a negative number on the raster and the raster so that they are very close together like this. So when I took my five parts, part A was just a simple default parameters, no problem. It was just built, but I could not hold a vacuum. So here are the changes I started making. I did this very methodically so I could know what was being affected. Uh, each time. So as I started looking here on, on B, I wanted to I added length contours. That helped some, but it wasn't enough. I started experimenting with the contour air gaps in here. As, and you really don't want to go more than two thousandths in here, I would recommend, because you can ooze up too much material. But as you can see, by the time I got to part E, I had my two thousandths in here, one thousandths, two thousandths. You can also do some custom groups. If you're not familiar with custom groups, then, uh, you can look it up in the help. But custom groups allows you to modify in just certain layers. So by applying uh, my modification to just certain layers in there, I got all the way up to E where I could um, actually hold a vacuum with my vacuum pump. Your on Part E, we modified quite a bit here. We did the multiple contours, the link contours, the contour to contour air gap, raster to raster, raster to contour. Here are the settings here, just like you would see in Insight that we used for that. However, because every geometry is different, 
you're going to want to still use some smoothing technique or some coating to seal your part. You're still going to want to seal it. While this worked for my experiment, my little bottle, I'm not sure that it would be uh, available to every part geometry out there, but starting with the most dense uh, fill that you can get in a part will help guarantee that your part will be sealed properly. I should mention that we have insight training available out there for those that have not used all the parameters. I just went over a few of them. I did not touch on the support parameters and some of the other ones that are out there. I just did a few on the um, a toolpath. There is a two or a two and a half day class offered for insight. Uh, the, the half day extra is if you have a larger machine, an F900. We go over a little more on the machine with that one. Uh, so there's training classes offered by CATI. Uh, we are Strasa certified instructors. Uh, they're at our CATI facility, or you can have them at your customers at your site. Uh, just check with our sales representative uh, for cost and details on that. And that's pretty much all I have. It, it's just a quick overview to show you some of the settings that you can change just to get a more dense part. Awesome. Well. Mark, thank you very much for, for sharing this information with us. Um, actually, I learned something today, and that means I get to go home. So I, I, I like learning things. Just wanted that so, I only have to learn one thing. Yesterday it was one plus one. Okay. So today it, it is controlling things with insight, which is pretty amazing. Yep. So very powerful tool. Thank you, everybody, and have a great day. We're going to have another one of these presentations at 1 o'clock.